Hey, and welcome back to another video in the AI Shorts video series. This is a series focused on artificial intelligence and how it's altering the landscape for all of us here in education. So today I want to specifically focus on AI writing. How has artificial intelligence impacted writing? What kind of writing is being produced by bots? How can you use it effectively in your various professional contexts? Are there ramifications or implications if we use it inappropriately or as students do? How can we better understand the ethics of writing in this world of artificial intelligence? We're going to primarily, in a second here, look at ChatGPT, which is the big force right now, OpenAI's bot. But I know every company out there, ranging from Microsoft to Google with Bard, are all trying to get on track and produce their own versions of artificial intelligence programs that write. So let's jump on here, talk a little bit about ChatGPT, some of the implications it has here for writing. Okay, so to get started here, we're just gonna look very generally working with ChatGPT. I've mentioned to you that I have a much longer series of videos, three separate videos actually, that take you through the ins and outs of ChatGPT as well as many other aspects of working with AI. So if you want anything more in depth, I would really recommend you check out those longer videos and I'll be sure to have those links available for you. We're gonna look at ChatGPT and ChatGPT is the uh, new AI service that has really taken everyone, every place, the internet, education, writing by storm. It's really the place that people go to to um, try out AI, to learn AI, to use it in various ways. And of course, as educators, we want to be very concerned about what happens with this in our classroom, how do we talk to our students about it, and so forth. So it does open a new world of possibility and also peril, I would say, in terms of how students might interact with ChatGPT or any other form of what's called generative AI. So artificial intelligence, if you're familiar with, is basically machine learning. And in the case of the AI that's used by ChatGPT, it's called a large language model. What that means is it takes billions of data points, tens of billions of data points, and observes them, analyzes them, and then is able to learn over time. And actually there are human actors on the other end of what we're working with here with ChatGPT, who will, like uh, training an animal, will respond and give tips to the bot as far as when it writes something that maybe isn't super accurate or if it has so-called hallucinations where it makes up texts, um, books, for example, or movies that don't actually exist. So one of the things that's really interesting about AI is the fact that it's using all this large language model to really understand more about us, which I think is both frightening and also promising in terms of thinking about things. Now, you may recall that in the world of sports some time ago, the big analytics movement came into being. And for a lot of purists of sports, they would say, you know, I want to go back to the old days of sports where people like Vince Lombardi and great coaches and players would, you know, play sports and be successful just through grit and, and creativity, human creativity, not going through the analytics to try to understand how they should play the next down or whatever. So what's happening in sports is let's say they'll take all the data of a fourth and one play, dependent on you know what the score in the game is, dependent on other criteria related to the players, depending on weather conditions, depending on success of all plays of that type in the past. And so based on that, they sometimes will use the analytics to make a decision. And sometimes those plays obviously don't play out. And it's sort of like, um, you know, playing your luck or playing the odds, going to a casino, playing Baccarat maybe, which is a game that has much better odds for the player than the house. So what's interesting is that this model is doing that, but it's doing it with language. And so therefore it's creating this giant database of information, of ideas, and then we interact with it much like we would in a real conversation with a person, which is kind of the scary side of this generative AI. So to get started with ChatGPT, uh, you could just Google the site or you can go to chatchat.openai.com. Once you go there, you're going to see something like this and it just says to verify. And then when you are actually working on a chat here, and for some reason today, usually I'm not... Um, uh, it's interesting. Okay, so it's saying you're not seeing what you created. It's coming back soon. So in the typical world of using ChatGPT, all my previous conversations are here. And what's cool about that is you can go back then and organize things 
not unlike a notebook or, you know, favorite files in your computer or favorite websites on a browser, etc. So, for example, if I'm doing one related to accreditation, I could have that here and click on another tab related to a different area. This shows you here some examples of what you could type in. And literally, you can do just about anything. You can actually ask it to write code. I've shown in some of the longer videos that um, I can ask it, please write, if I could spell, sorry, an HTML code for the local weather. And I, I hit return, and then it uh, spits it back. If you do anything like code, it always does it in this code browser, and then you could copy the code. You could also use it to proof code. If you have a problem with code, you could paste it in, and it will tell you what the problem is going to be. And obviously, our CIS or computer studies instructors might be concerned about this because we don't want students necessarily just going to chat GPT and using it only to find the answer without going through all the steps. And then it tells you here, typically, that you have to replace something like the API key which is what gives it the specific local weather data that you might need to use. So that's one example of doing code. Now, I was thinking of this today, and by the way, check on my other videos that I have for you, because I'm going to be doing a video using ChatGPT just to do a syllabus, just to do a lesson plan, just to do a script and so forth. So this is going to be a very brief video. I'm only going to show you one example. But let's say I'm working on my accreditation, and I put in this prompt. Okay, so what this is, is this is one of the standards um, from Area 1C, I believe. And so I put in quotes, and then I just said, could you write what a successful response to this ACCJC accreditation prompt would be? And then I put the prompt in. So check this out. I, hit, I could either hit return here or hit the little arrow. And then it's going to spit all this out. And this is kind of the scary side of this. I remember the first time I used ChatGPT. Uh, I think it was to create a syllabus. I was blown away at how good it was. Or I had it create sample interview questions for a particular hiring committee. And I was like, wow, it is really good in terms of coming up with stuff that maybe rivals what I can do, in some cases better than what I can do, which is kind of the scary side uh, of uh, ChatGPT and open AI technologies. So this says here, these are the key points you should include. And then here's a possibility of a successful response. So I think the million dollar question is, is this okay to do, do this? And I'm sure for all of our work areas here at the college, whether we're working on accreditation or doing or teaching or counseling or working in the library, the question will come up, is it okay for us to do something like this? We're all gonna have different opinions about that from an ethical standpoint. We're all maybe going to have different negotiations of that, say in the future, if AI comes to impact our contract or our um, working hours, or how we do our work, and so forth. My recommendation for you in the short term is, yes, you could use something like this. So I could take this and cut and paste it, let's say, to my Word document. But then I'm going to maybe want to look at it and not use it verbatim. And by the way, usually when you cut and paste it, you want to choose, this is at least on a Mac, keep text only. It sometimes kind of uh, creates almost like a table format. So what will happen then is anything with bullets or numbered lists will um, get stripped of all that so you can kind of go in and, and make adjustments. So what I'd want to do is look at any of this and maybe this gets me on the right track and I say, okay, yeah, in this standard, I need to talk about academic freedom. So in a sense, it could be a helpful tool to get you to think about some areas, but never, never, never for anything I, I would ever do, would I use chat GPT as a verbatim tool. And the other thing I would say is just in my world working as a writer, um, as an academic, writing about themed and immersive spaces, I never plan to use it in this sense. Now, would I use it like I would use a search engine to go in and ask some questions about my research area? That I would use, but I would never use it for verbatim writing. I just don't think that's really legit, at least the way I see it. What's interesting about this, you might say, well, I'm never gonna use ChatGPT. Well, we're not too far away from Google our favorite website, being operated through the same technologies. In fact, Google is working on their bar technology. It's only in beta right now, but eventually this will all come up with AI responses. Uh, the other one out there is Microsoft, and Microsoft has already said that they plan to put this inside of their um, particular uh, Word suite and so forth. So 
I'm saying this because you might think to yourself, I'm never going to use ChatGPT because my interest is making sure that everything I write is original and I don't feel good about it. And that's fine. Again, I think all of us can have our own conversations about how we want to use it or not, but I think it can be a powerful tool. So I think that's where I want to leave it today in terms of thinking about ChatGPT and its possibilities. So this is very brief. Check out my longer videos and check out my additional AI shorts videos that will take you through individual prompts, everything from a script to a syllabus to a lesson plan and many other forms. And that's going to be it today here. We looked at ChatGPT and some of the implications of writing that impacts us here as faculty at LTCC. I hope you have a chance to consider some of these issues, reach out to your students and really talk to them about the technology, how it's changing. And by all means, we should all have that self-reflection as faculty in terms of how this is changing our lives and how we deal with, with education in our unique context. So thanks for listening. I'll be back with more videos in this series.